Welcome to the Basilica Parish of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Today is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel, Jesus reminds us that the great commandment, the love of God and the love of our neighbor, are the one and the same great commandment. To love your neighbor as yourself is the key to our relationship with God. Please know that all are welcome here today, regardless of our age, orientation, race, whether we worship regularly or only when we can, whether we embrace the life of the church or are struggling to find God in the midst of it all. Jesus comes to all of us, saints and sinners alike this day. It is the mission of our parish to welcome and open wide our doors to all who come here to pray. Our celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Mike Ventrano. Let us lift our hearts in worship and praise as together we stand and join in singing our entrance hymn, Lord, I lift your name on high. Once again, that's Lord, I lift your name on high. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace, the peace, the love of our Lord Jesus be with you always. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all who are joining us online today. Happy Halloween. What? I can't wish you happy. You know, it's a religious day. Halloween is the eve of all hallows, eve of all the holy ones, literally. So Halloween is in the world of the church the eve before the celebration of the Feast of All Saints, right? So it's okay. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I don't see too many costumes, though. We'll have to, I guess you have to work on that today. So today as we gather, we ask the merciful compassion of our God. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us praise our God.
take a moment now to bow our heads in prayer, to be ready to hear and listen to God's saving word. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today, the word of the Lord. just and the upright of heart the just one shall see the glory of the lord exalt all people of god be glad in the lord give thanks to god's name be glad in the lord give thanks to god's name.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separate, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subjects to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath which was taken over after the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is God alone. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is the one, there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than any burnt offering or sacrifice. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, and you are not far from the kingdom of God. No one dared to ask any more questions. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Week by week, as I'm kind of thinking about Sunday and the Gospel and what to say about it, my homily, I I often, a lot of times, think of like, how will I best explain this? How can I really make this scripture come alive? Sometimes, like, like today when I read the gospel, I, I think, how can I get out of the way? How can I not mess this up? What really could I ever add to anything as clear as what Jesus is saying? In fact, even in the gospel today, it's kind of a stopper. Once Jesus has said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is God alone, to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength, and to love God's people, our neighbor, is worth more than any offering or sacrifice. No one asks another question. That's it. There's nothing more that needs to be said. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to walk off the stage at the moment, because there is a little bit that might help to understand in our world why this is important. First of all, the, the context of what's going on in the gospel today is that Judaism had lots of different laws about lots of different things. 
about the keeping of kosher homes, about prayers to be said, about the welcoming of strangers and widows and orphans, all kinds of rules. And, and people often discuss, the rabbis discussed endlessly of these commandments, which ones were more important, which ones were central, which ones really defined you as a, as a true Jewish person. They discussed this endlessly. And when they asked Jesus, which of the commandments is the greatest, they're really asking him, well, you're a teacher too, How, why don't you weigh in on this? And actually Jesus answers with not one of the, not really one of the teachings themselves, not one of the laws, certainly not one of the things that were created by the, the rabbis or their teachings or reflections. He answers with that little passage from the book of Deuteronomy, the book of the Pentateuch, the five first books of the Bible. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is God alone. There is no other God than he. And to love him with everything is the commandment. Uh, when I was traveling into the Holy Land last time, I met the man who was our tour guide, Shafiq, was a Christian living in Israel all his life, uh, living now as a very m much a minority Christians living in the Holy Land. And he was talking about uh, his family. And he said that when each of his children was born, he whispered those words of the book of Deuteronomy in their ear. He wanted that to be the first thing that they would ever hear. The Lord our God is God alone. Love him with your heart, with your soul, with your mind, and with your strength. And there's something about that that goes beyond all of the things that people think about as, as being what faith is about or what religion itself is really all about. In our, own, in our own Christian faith, for Jews, this, this hero Israel, the Lord our God is God alone, people have said that that's really their creed in a religion that doesn't tend to write down creeds the way that Catholicism and Christianity do. Our creed, which we read on Sundays, we read often at this Mass, the Apostles' Creed, uh, we also read the Nicene Creed, are, are, very, are really creeds of how you think their understandings about God, and they come to us from a scholastic tradition, the tradition of the Catholic scholars and doctors of the church. And they're, they're about our, our thoughts, like the whole Nicene Creed is about how do we really think about the fact that we say there is one God, but we worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so how do they relate to each other? And when we read the Nicene Creed, we read that Jesus is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Sounds more philosophical than love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, right? And that's because that tradition is very thoughtful and very erudite and wants us to really seek understanding. Often when you ask people about their relationship to God, we always, we're like a, a whole nation, a whole world now of opinion polls, right? So you'll, you'll often hear people say like, how many people think there's a God? How many people believe that God exists? Do you believe God exists? And I think really when you think about that from God's point of view, that must cause like hysterical reaction because like, oh, I'm the creator of the universe and they, they, they want to debate whether or not I exist, right? I mean, that's sort of Funny kind of thing, right? God exists. How'd you get here? Um, but it's not about what we think. The real test of faith, the real important thing in faith, is whether we love this Lord our God. And love this Lord our God as being the only thing in the world that really counts. The Lord our God is God alone. There are no other gods, no, not wealth, not power, not the things that we think are important or fill us with prestige. The Lord our God is God alone. And to love that God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength is worth more than what we think or what we plan or what we reflect on or what we have. There is nothing more than that. When I was first ordained a priest, I'd studied a lot of that tradition of the scholars and a lot of stuff about the faith. 
And I was living in this parish um, with a wonderful pastor, my first pastor, uh, Monsignor Dan Potterton. And, uh, and there were like two or three of us young guys right out of the seminary working there in the parish back in those days when there were like lots and lots of priests around. And, um, and we would have these intense discussions at dinner about theology. We were doing the same thing the rabbis did. What's the most important? What really makes you a good Catholic? What, what's the thing that we should be teaching, the thing that we should be doing? We'd go back and forth and, and sometimes we'd get even a little heated and we'd really be like arguing passionately. And one night in the middle of one of those passionate kinds of arguments about what we think is the most important, um, on senior Dan sitting at the head of the table, kind of laughed. And he just said, so gentlemen, tell me this. How much theology does it take to be kind to people? And that's all he said. And then he got up, and dinner was over. <laughs> how much theology, how much thinking, how much opinion does it take to love the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, to love each and every one of God's people as our neighbor? Let's pray the words together of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of our bodies, and life everlasting. Amen. Our God encourages us to humbly ask for those things for which we need, and inspired by the gospel today, we bring our prayers before God. The response to our prayers is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our homes and in our hearts, for peace among the nations of the world and among the peoples of all nations. For an end to war throughout the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for wisdom on the part of our nation and its citizens as we prepare for elections this week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community here at Sacred Hearts, for open hearts to God's word today, for open eyes to see God's face in each person we meet, for the sending of the Spirit upon those to be confirmed next Sunday, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those who are suffering, for those in nursing homes and in the hospital, for those who care for them and minister to their needs, for all those whose names are listed in the parish bulletin and in our parish book of intentions, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We remember those who have died, especially Sister Virginia Crowley, and for all the faithful departed whose names are written in our book of remembrance, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. At this Mass, let us pray especially today for the people of the parish and Paul de Stefano for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray them in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I thank you always for your generosity to the parish that keeps our ministries alive and well, and thanks to all those who share in these celebrations online for all those ways that you find to keep in touch with us. As we bring our gifts to the table of the Lord, let us join our voices in singing, We Come to Your Feast, which can be found in your music program. Again, that's We Come to Your Feast. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure offering, and for us a holy outpouring of mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live, we move, and we have our being. Each day you show us your love, your Holy Spirit dwelling within, giving us here on earth the hope of unending joy. For your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus is the foretaste and the promise of an eternal feast in heaven. In thankful praise and company with the saints, we glorify your power. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, 
with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray together now for the building of God's kingdom in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And in a word or a gesture toward others, we extend the gift of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please open your music program and join in singing today's communion hymn, On That Holy Mountain.
On Saturday, November 6th, we will celebrate our All Souls Mass at 10 a.m. A special invitation has been sent to those who have lost loved ones in this, in this past year and whose funeral liturgies were held here at Sacred Hearts. If you know others who would appreciate an invitation, please contact the rectory. Monday, November 1st is All Saints Day. Since this feast day falls on a Monday, it is not a holy day of obligation. But please know that we will celebrate Mass for the Feast of All Saints at 9 a.m. on Monday. On Tuesday, November 2nd, we will celebrate Mass at 9 a.m. for the Feast of All Souls Day. Our workshop focusing on regaining our spiritual, physical, and emotional health after COVID continues this week. There are still a few openings available. See the bulletin for more details. All men and women who have served our country in the armed forces are invited to come to the 930 Mass next Sunday, November 10th, as we honor your service and ask God's blessing. You are welcome to attend in uniform if you wish, or to wear another insignia <laughs> or sign of your service. The Knights of Columbus begin selling Christmas cards after Masses this weekend. The sale will continue until Thanksgiving weekend. Friday Eucharistic Adoration takes place after our Mass on Fridays. Come spend an hour with us to pray for healing, peace, and strength in our families. Thank you for praying together with us today. Please take home a copy of the bulletin, for there are so many wonderful and exciting upcoming events here at Sacred Hearts. So there are a lot of things happening. We have uh, All Saints Day tomorrow, All Souls Day on Tuesday. We have our All Souls memorial that we've invited people who've had losses over this past year here at the parish to celebrate next Saturday morning. And then we have Veterans Day, which we'll celebrate on, on Sunday. It's the 7th, not the 10th. Cut and paste-itis here, didn't check it. And, uh, and then we have next Sunday is our day of confirmation with Bishop Murphy in the afternoon. Um, we have 40 young people getting confirmed this week, so, uh, so we'll be a little busy, but it's great. Church is filled with life, and thank you for being a part of it. Let's pray and give God thanks. Oh yes, and buy those Christmas cards. They're going fast. May the working of your power, O oh Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you for praying together today. Thank you for joining us online. May our saving God bless us today and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace to love, to serve our Lord. Have a great day. We'll see you out there in costume at some point, I hope. I was up in the hospital the other day wearing my collar, and or last week, I guess it was one of the days that Halloween uh, was there, and. Uh, Somebody came up to me and said, great costume. <laughs> so, <laughs> you better sing before something bad happens. <laughs> Save us. Our sending forth hymn this morning can be found in your music program. Please stay and sing with us, This Little Light of Mine. Once again, that's This Little Light of Mine.